Hello everyone. So today we are going to study coagulation pathway. First of all, we have to know that what is meant by word coagulation. And uh, the word coagulation means process of conversion of soluble fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin. This is the definition of word coagulation. Fibrinogen is present in our blood in soluble form. So we have to convert fibrinogen into insoluble form, which is fibrin, and then fibrin will help in formation of secondary platelet plaque. So this is meant by the word coagulation. And coagulation is a property of plasma. Uh, and fibrinogen is present in uh, plasma. So there are basically the two pathways to which coagulation occurs. There is one pathway that is intrinsic pathway, and the second one is extrinsic pathway. We will go through them one by one. First of all, we will discuss the intrinsic pathway. What is intrinsic pathway? Intrinsic pathway is basically the activation of factor 12, which causes a cascade of clotting factors activation leading to formation of fibrin. So why, how the intrinsic pathway come into action? So basically, whenever, whenever our blood blood faces any negatively charged surface. It will lead to the activation of factor 12 present in blood. Uh, intrinsic pathway uh, comes in action when blood comes in contact with the negatively charged surface, like negatively charged surface provided by platelets. Whenever, uh, uh, in the previous video, I have, uh, uh, I have explained that uh, primary platelet plug formation so primary platelet plug formation has, uh, here the platelets have negatively charged surface and when this negatively charged surface come in contact with the blood, the uh, factor 12 present in blood will, uh, will become active and it forms a uh, 12A, factor 12A. Then the factor 12A will lead to the formation of 11A, causes the activation of factor 11, which led to the activation of factor 9 and then 8 and uh, ultimately this led to the activation of factor 10. Factor 10 is converted into 10A, which is an active form, and here calcium is maintained. So this is the intrinsic pathway. Here, basically, we uh, we have to know that why intrinsic pathway come into action in second, how it initiates. How it initiates, it initiates with the factor 12, and then leading uh, to a formation of clotting factors, uh, formation, I mean, activation of clotting, uh, clotting factors, various clotting factors, which can ultimately lead to the factor 10, 10A activation. Now, the story ahead to this is similar in both pathways so first of all i have explained the intrinsic pathway up to here then i am going to extrinsic pathway now we have to start begins extrinsic pathway begins when the damaged cells damaged cells releases factor tissue factor which is factor three so intrinsic pathway comes into action when the damage cell produces a tissue factor and then this tissue factor will cause the activation of factor 7 into 7a and 7a directly causes the activation of factor 10. So this is a, this is the shortest pathway, this is somewhat longer. So this takes only few seconds, approximately 30 seconds. However, intrinsic pathway, it takes about 4 to 6 minutes. Now, both intrinsic and extrinsic part, pa pathway had, have activities of factor 10. Now, the story ahead is similar in both cases. Factor 10A will convert the prothrombin into thrombin, and here calcium and factor 5 are needed. This thrombin will convert, convert soluble fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin, which is factor 1. So, this was the goal that coagulation. Uh, Coagulation uh, defines that in conversion of in uh, soluble fibrinogen into insoluble fibrin, and the other thing it do uh, does factor ten it converts factor it it activates factor thirteen. Factor thirteen is fibrin stabilizing factor, and when it uh, uh, it forms the fibrin polymers, which then uh, which then form a meshwork uh, around the platelets in the primary platelet plug and will uh, lead to formation of secondary platelet plug. So this was uh, these uh, these were two coagulation pathways who, um, where the goal was to form fibrin. Now we will see that uh, uh, to assay the function of uh, proteins involved in intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway. To assay the to assess the uh, uh, function of proteins involved in uh, involved in intrinsic pathway, there is a 
there is a uh, there is a test which is known as which is known as partial thromboplastin tank. Partial thromboplastin tank. It is used to assess the function of proteins involved in intrinsic pathway, and the proteins involved in the intrinsic pathway are uh, 12, 11, then, 10, uh, then 9, 8, 10, 2, 5, 2, and 1. To assess the function of these all protein factors, there is a test which is known as uh, partial thromboplastin test, uh, partial thromboplastin tank. And if there is the deficiency of factor 8, then there will be the disease which is known as hemophilia A. And uh, if there is a deficiency of factor 9, then there will be a blood disorder which is known as hemophilia B. I have uh, discussed the uh, hemorrhagic disorders in, in details in my, in my another video. So here I'm just going through their names. That factor 8 deficiency will lead to hemophilia A and factor 9 deficiency will lead to hemophilia B. And now we will move towards the uh, um, prothrombin time. Prothrombin time is basically the test to assess the function of proteins involved in extrinsic pathway. So the number of proteins involved in extrinsic pathway are factor 3, then 7, then 10, then 5, 2, and 1. So at, to assess their function, there is a test which is known as um, uh, prothrombin time. And if there is deficiency in uh, factor 7, then uh, they, there will be the increase, there will be the prolonged prothrombin time, and if there are deficiency of factor 8 and factor 9, then there will be the increased uh, partial thromboplastin time. Why this factor 7 is uh, low? It can be due to some liver disorder because uh, factor 7 is found in the liver. So the one thing is liver disorder. Then the second thing can be vitamin K deficiency. Vitamin K deficiency due to can be due to uh, our malnourishment or can be due to the GIT disorders like Crohn's disease and then uh, uh, because vitamin K is necessary to uh, to convert vitamin uh, to convert this factor into its activated form and then the third thing can be warfarin use Warfarin basically inhibits this vitamin K con uh, vitamin K conversion of factors into their activated form. So how this war warfarin will uh, will uh, downregulate this factor seven because it inhibits vitamin K activation. So these were the coagulation pathways. Now. Now we have discussed the coagulation pathways. We have discussed how to assess the function of the proteins involved in both intrinsic and extrinsic pathway. Now we will study the factors that limit the coagulation. So basically, first factor is dilution. First factor is dilution. How dilution? Because there is constant blood flow, so there is washing out of activated clotting factors. So this is how dilution will limit coagulation. The second thing is requirement of negatively charged surface. We have studied that first of all the, the platelets provide us the negatively charged surface. Now these platelets are involved in activation in both pathways, in both pathways uh, cascade or running, so there will be no negatively charged surface which can lead to the activation of clotting factors and then lead to the coagulation pathways. Third thing is fibrinolytic pathway activation. This coagulation pathway itself activates the fibrinolytic activity. Yes, on our endothelium, there is present tissue plasminogen activator. It will convert plasminogen into plasmin, and now this plasmin will cause the fibrinolysis. So this is how fibrinolytic pathway activation will lead will lead to limitation of coagulation. So here basically are three factors. First one is dilution, second one is requirement for negative leach, or surface, and third one is fibrinolytic pathway activation. This was all about the coagulation pathway. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.